WrestleMania 33 Smackdown Edition predictions, if that's the right title to use. I don't even know what title I'm going to use to explain this, because people may think I'm going to talk about what's going to happen in WrestleMania, and that's the review. This is not a review. This is a predictions video. If you already see my WrestleMania 33 predictions breakdown, I explained it very clearly. I'm breaking this into two videos and talking about the brand separately. So let's get to the first match that SmackDown may have. This will not be in any order that's on the card because I don't know what the card is going to be. I may say what it might be, but let's get this done now. For the kickoff show, now this is going to be interpromotional, and this is the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Now every year they do the Battle Royal before anything else. Because we know the kickoff show is roughly two hours. It starts at 5. It ends by 7 o'clock. So they will probably do the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal on the kickoff show like they did in the last, last year and I believe the year before. So what do you think is going to happen? Hmm. This is what I'm thinking. You got Braun Strowman on Raw. You got The Big Show on Raw. And they already got something going on there. So I do not believe they're not going to do something about that on the kickoff show. Now the people we have on our side is going to be Mojo Raleigh, it's going to be Dolph Ziggler. And the problem I see is if they're going to use one of the people from SmackDown, you would think maybe Dolph Ziggler. I doubt it would be Mojo Raleigh. My guess is it's going to be Big Show or worse yet, Braun Strowman. Anyone who knows how the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal Cup works. They give it to somebody for a whole year until the next WrestleMania. And notoriously, anyone who wins that title of the one who holds the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal Cup or trophy, they get buried. They get treated badly. They get the title of it, but they never get anywhere. So it could be one of three people. It could be Dolph Ziggler who gets it. It could be Braun Strowman who gets it. Or it could be Big Show. If you're going to be honest about it, my guess is it could be Dolph Ziggler who wins. And I know that's saying a lot. But since they have done something with Dolph Ziggler in the last six to nine months, they may actually give it to him. Now, do I believe that's the right thing to do? No. But they may do that. You never know. But if it's not someone from SmackDown and it's someone from Raw, they're probably going to give it to Braun Strowman. If it's not Dolph Ziggler on SmackDown, it may be Braun Strowman on Raw. And to be honest, that thing does not help anybody. But this is what I think will happen. Next on the kickoff show. I believe they're going to put the Usos versus American Alpha. The only reason I'm saying this is due to the fact that how American Alpha jobbed to the Usos the week before, they it, it just makes sense. They want American Alpha to get a big payout on WrestleMania, even if it is the kickoff show. And that's what angers me personally, because to be honest, it, you should have waited until WrestleMania to actually have the match with the Usos versus the Alphas. But then you give the titles to the Usos, who hasn't had a very good build, other than the last two to three weeks. Because months before, they have been jobbing and they have looked stupid. So it makes you think they're going to job here. Now, of course, I could still be wrong and they could be on the main show. But I don't believe they will be. I believe the Usos are going to be on the kickoff show with the Alphas and the Alphas are going to win that title back. And it'll be a total waste of time for the Usos. Now, for the main card. The first thing I think that'll appear for Raw will be, not Raw, SmackDown, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about what's going to be done for the Raw, review, Raw edition of WrestleMania 33. I'm trying not to get them confused, so I apologize. The first one is going to be, is the IC title match between Baron Corbin and Dean Ambrose. I believe they're going to do this first for SmackDown. And I feel that the person that's going to win, and it'll probably be a good match, Dean can pull one out of his hat periodically. He hasn't been very good lately because he's become a bit stagnant in his wrestling ability. He should be a little bit better than what he is now. 
But still, he is what he is. And in the end, I believe the best person to win that will be Baron Corgan. Even though the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal has been around his neck for a year, they have promoted him to a certain extent. He's worked with AJ Styles. He's worked with Randy Orton. He has worked with Kane. Yes, he's worked with Dolph Ziggler. Yes, he worked with Callisto. And he worked with Apollo Crews. But he has worked with the big names of John Cena, Randy Orton, and he has worked with AJ Styles. So that means something. So I believe he will be winning the IC title. Now, AJ Styles versus Shane McMahon. Now, I know I could be saying this later in the card, and it probably will be. But I want to get this done now because I believe this is very important to talk about. AJ Styles is one of the best all-around wrestlers that has been prom promoted in the wrestling industry for the last 10 years. 10. No matter where he's gone... He has done something substantial for that promotion, which is R.O.H., has been TNA, and now WWE. I, and New Japan, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Sorry, I boxed. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, particularly in the last three or four years, he really has set wrestling on fire. People have been more interested in watching wrestling because of AJ Styles. Then you got Shane McMahon, who came back after almost seven years. People loved Shane. And he decided after a certain amount of time, because of how the business was being run in his family, that he, look, we know this, that Stephanie took over and fucked him over. We know that Paul Levesque fucked him over to a certain extent. And when it came to Vince himself, he fucked him too. And he reached a point where, look, you don't want to hear anything I say. I'm tired of it. So I'm going to leave. And he goes away for about seven to eight years, almost eight. And then he comes back. And now, he's back. People love him. And he's running a, uh, a brand that pretty much is pretty good. We care more about SmackDown and Raw because he's running it. And the way he's acting is something we like. So putting two guys together that has always been known to be Great wrestling, magic, you got something very substantial. I do believe that they'll probably be at the very end of the night. I do not believe that they're going to be in the middle of the show. I believe they're going to be near the end. Maybe the last four matches, one of them will be theirs. And how is it going to go? A lot of hot flying. A lot of madness. And this is a, a hard one to call. Who should win it? Because Shane doesn't need to win over AJ Styles. AJ Styles really does need to win over Shane. He's getting a good rub. And I do believe that even if AJ does lose to Shane McMahon, he would have gotten an incredible rub on a WrestleMania. And that's something substantial. The son of the owner of the company just gave him a big ass rub that will not be forgotten for many years to come. And... Honestly, you could say AJ doesn't really care. It doesn't really matter if he wins or loses. He's going to be near the end of the show. If they put him near the middle, I'll be surprised. If they put them in the very beginning, I would definitely be surprised. Because this is a very strong feud. But my guess is it'll be near the end. And to be honest, I don't know who's going to win. But AJ will gain something big for, for this match, no matter if he wins or loses. Now, the women's, <sighs> the women's free-for-all, if you're going to call it for that, for the women's SmackDown title, Alexa Bliss versus Carmella versus Natalia versus Becky versus Mika Jane, and a possible returning Naomi. We just don't know. We don't know if Naomi's coming back. Brittany. Beth, you girls know how I feel. You know I love me, Naomi. She's probably sitting on my shoulder right now. She's going to be there until the end of what I'm about to say. But let, let's be honest here. We love this girl. She worked her ass off for eight years. Everyone else and their mother and their grandmother have gotten that title. Have gotten the previous title, the Divas. Have gotten the previous title before that, the women 
well, the women's title, the divas title, and then the women's title. People you would expect not to get it, got it. And to be honest, I am so glad she finally won it. Now, if she's able to return, I truly believe she will regain that title. She will not job to Alexa Bliss or anyone else in that free-for-all. That's at least what I understand. And, and I do believe that she will win. Now, if she does not appear at WrestleMania 33, the person that probably will get that title will still be Alexa Bliss. I do believe they're not going to let Alexa job here, even though it will probably be a wise thing to do. Maybe to a Mickey Jane. I would truly believe Mickey Jane should be the one to win it. But if Naomi's not there, Alexa will probably still retain it until, re until Naomi comes back. And maybe they'll set it up for a pay-per-view for her. But that's just how I feel about it. John Cena and Nikki Bella versus The Miz and the... Mm, I was never a huge Maurice fan. I thought she was good, but I never loved her. Since she came back, I liked her a lot. Since she did the John Cena and Nikki Bella parody, oh, I love this woman. I, and she was just fun. And when it comes down to this match, and this is possibly the last match that Nikki Bella is going to have. We've already been hearing rumors that Nikki Bella is retiring after this to go into real estate because that has become her new first love. She's going to make more money there, and she doesn't have to beat up on the body. And, to be honest, I'm actually surprised she decided to do this because she still has at least another three or four years to really do something before she could leave. But I understand she really wants to go into real estate. Now, how do I believe this is going to go down? This is going to be, hmm, I don't believe Maurice and Nikki are going to be in the ring a lot. I do believe John and The Miz is going to carry this. Mike and John are going to carry this match more than Maurice and Nikki Bella because Maurice has not been in the ring much. Since she came back with The Miz, she has barely been in the ring. So I don't believe she's got ring awareness anymore. I think she's a bit rusty. So I do not believe they're going to be doing this very much. Doesn't mean that she couldn't still pull something out of her hat and talk about Maurice. But this is just how I feel that they're going to make this more about John and Michael Misbin then about Maurice and Nikki Bella. In the end, I do believe Nikki and John are going to win. I doubt they're going to let The Miz and Maurice win this. And the rumors of John Cena wanting to propose to her at WrestleMania probably might happen. He may actually propose to her. All those little parody drops could really mean that he may propose to her. Now, is it a real proposal? Who knows? If this is really Nikki Bella's last match, maybe this is a parody so John Cena would have something extra for his character. Now, if it's a real thing, well, more power to you both. That's just how I feel. Finally, the final match of the night. And this will be the match of the night for WrestleMania, and this is Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. Whew. This was a hard one, ladies and gentlemen. A hard one to think, how is this going to play out? We know this is probably going to be a very good match. Because Randy Orton, when he's in the mood, will pull off a freaking good match with no matter who he's with. Well, if they have ability, no matter who he's with, they will blow, they will blow the minds of the people. They can. And I'm saying this. It's not the problem of their performance in the ring. Because I'm sure Bray Wyatt's going to be able to pull it off. And Randy as well. It's not the feud itself that's the issue with me. Because the feud has been built pretty substantially. They worked hard to make this feud something special. So I'm not bitching about that. It's because of the build-up for Bray Wyatt himself. Look, let's be honest here. For the last three and a half years... Bray Wyatt has been buried by The Undertaker, John Cena, Dean Ambrose. Uh, let, let, let's be honest here. Those are the major people that he has worked with and they have not really given him any benefits. 
any feuds he's had, particularly with Daniel Bryan and Kane, and then he was working with Daniel Bryan, and then Daniel Bryan went to the dark side and turned back to the light side, this was never about Bray Wyatt. This was about either the Wyatts or about Daniel Bryan. This was either about the character of John Cena and Bray Wyatt's Wyatt's and his ideology. This has never been about Bray. And the problem of last year with Bray was that Bray Wyatt was not built at all. He jobbed. And then he beat someone, but then jobbed the next night after the pay-per-view on a Raw. Then he jobs again. And then he speaks really well. And then they build up to something interesting. And then he jobs again. And then he jobs again. And then at the last part of this year, they decided, okay, Bray needs a title to become substantial for WrestleMania this year. And what did he get? He finally gets a tag title with Randy Orton. He loses his title because of the conflict between Randy Orton and Luke Harper. And then this year, what did we get? He finally wins the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Or the SmackDown World Heavyweight Championship. It doesn't matter. But in the end, they finally give him a title, but he has no relevance behind it. And like I've always said in my book in the wrestling series, you can either have relevance, a title, sometimes you can have both. But in this case, because of his lackluster building, he really doesn't have a lot behind him. And I'm seeing this from a long perspective, not just because of WrestleMania. This will probably be a great match for WrestleMania because it's closing the show. They won the right at Royal Rumble to close the show. But the problem I see is this, that after this is over, will Bray Wyatt be continued? Will he be pushed? I actually had to think about that because I had to think about what's going to happen after WrestleMania because some, uh, calm down. SummerSlam is going to be an issue. Possibly all the other pay-per-views are going to be an issue all the way up in the Survivor Series for the simple reason if Bray Wyatt is dropped after WrestleMania, whether he wins the title or loses it, and my guess is he's going to probably lose the title. To Randy Orton. The way they've been structuring him. I doubt Bray is going to win this. He won't retain it. <coughs> Excuse me. I doubt he's going to retain. My guess is he's going to drop the strap to Randy. But what then? Is he going to be like this? Then he's going to go down like this? That's my question. Because WrestleMania is wonderful. But I'm seeing the guy from a long term and I just don't see it. I'm hoping I'm wrong. So my prediction for the last match is Randy could probably win this. And then the next SmackDown, we're going to probably deal with seeing a Bray Wyatt going from the apex to basically a jobber on a quick slide. But this is just my point of view of WrestleMania 33. You guys tell me below. And I hope you like this position. <sighs> I got so much stuff going off in my head of what I'm going to do for the next Raw edition of WrestleMania 33. And I'm botching my ending. <laughs> I hope you like this predictions addiction, addiction, addition of SmackDown. Give me a comment. Tell me how you feel that what's going to happen for SmackDown part of WrestleMania 33. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace.